Welcome everyone to MTG Deck Masters. In today's video, we're looking at the top 5 most played modern decks a week after the ban of Valent Outburst. I'll make an update on the top 5 most played decks in April of 2024 in a couple of weeks. But for now, here's how the metagame looks after the ban of Valent Outburst for this month, March 2024. And I'm only looking at results from the past 7 days that excludes decks that were played before the ban of Valent Outburst, even though they were not playing the card. And the number 5 most popular deck in the last 7 days, with 7.1% of the metagame and 73 results either on Modern Leagues, Modern Challenges, or Modern Preliminaries, is Amulet Titan. This deck's been really popular for a long time in Modern Now, and now we're seeing a return to Explore in the main deck. And not all lists are playing Expedition Map. They're trimming on Cultivator Colossus and Azusa Lost But Seeking. The deck is also not playing, for the most part, the Slayer Stronghold Boros Garrison combo. Only 42% of decks are playing Boros Garrison and Slayer Stronghold with Sun Home to give double strike to the Titan. And the rest of the decks are playing Valakut for red and Handward Battlements to give the Titan haste. Mirror Pool to copy the Titan and Kessig Wolfrun to sink all your mana. And um, that's a nice way to bring the Titan to a really high power. It also gives it Trample. Not relevant in the case of Primeval Titan, but it could be relevant if you have an Arboreal Grazer on the battlefield. And you can just put a bunch of mana into your Kessig Wolfrun, pump it to attack the opponent. And then in the sideboard, Defense Grid has become really popular to fight... First of all, the Cascade decks, but also decks like Is It Murktide, because Rhinos is not dead, it's still being played. It was number 7 of the most played decks uh, last week, so it's not in the top 5, but it's still a deck in the modern metagame. And you have Is It Murktide that was at number 6, and then you have decks like Omnath and Creativity that can potentially have a hard time fighting Defense Grid. Then you have Generous Ant to cycle for your basic forests against Blood Moon, which allows you to um, channel your Baseju with the green mana to destroy the Blood Moon. They have Endurance, Engineered Explosives, Storm's Wrath, Radiant Fountain, Bajuka Bog, Dismember, and Curse Totem. So Storm's Wrath, Curse Totem, great cards against Yawgmoth, which is really popular right now. But Storm's Wrath is also good against Rhinos. And it's also good against a lot of the other creature decks that are popular right now. So that's Amulet Titan at number 5. At number 4, we have Golgari Yogmoth with 8.6% of the metagame and 88 competitive tournament finishes in the last 7 days. It's a deck that was popular before the ban of Val Outburst. It was popular long before that, especially after the printing of Agatha's Soul Cauldron in Wilds of Eldrain. deck is based around Yogmoth Rand Physician and had a pretty bad matchup against Rhinos. So now that Rhinos is nowhere near as popular as it once was. Then Yawgmoth just has some breathing room, breathing room. And also, it was one of the weakest decks to Fury. Now that Fury is banned, of course that's a positive for Yawgmoth. So it seems like the deck gets better and better every single change in the modern format. And also now, there's a lot of 1-1 one, one damage cards like Red and 6 and 4-color Omnath that's coming back. And you also have Orkish Bowmasters in Yawgmoth, as well as Rakdos Scam. So the deck doesn't really play cards like Noble Hierarch and Ignoble Hierarch anymore, you see. Ignoble Hierarch is only played as a one-of in some decks. And then you have Delighted Halfling and Wall of Roots for some mana, or one-of Dryad Arbor. And then you have Orkish Bow Masters uh, for Yawgmoth, for Young Wolf, one Hapatra, uh, one Shieldred, one Blood Artist, one Haywire Might, one Endurance, and one to two Strangled Root Geist. Then four Grist, the Hunger Tide, great card for grindy matchups. And then only one copy of Eldritch Evolution, that's mostly because of Agatha Soul Cauldron. And then in the sideboard, you have Fulminator Mage, really good against Amulet and Tron, which are really popular right now. Endurance, great against Goriel's Vengeance, which we'll get into very soon. Fatal Push, great against Domain Zoo and other creature decks like the Mirror Match. A Force of Vigor, great card against Tron and Amulet. Soulless Jailer, great for any Arda and any uh, graveyard-based strategy. Chalice, still here for Rhinos and Loving End because they still exist, especially Rhinos. 
but it's also good against a variety of other decks that use a lot of one drops. Legion Zen, pick your poison, amazing card. It's one of the best new additions to modern, and as an amulet player, I really hate this card. Thought Seize for combo decks and control decks, Rex Sage, and Scavenging Ooze. So that's Golgari Yawgmoth and what the lists look like in the past week. Here's another one. Looks pretty much like the same thing we just talked about. At number three, with 8.8% of the metagame, we have Mono Green Tron. This deck's making a pretty substantial comeback after the banning of Valent Outburst. It was not in the top five, but now it's top three. So definitely a nice comeback for Tron. You see the deck is not even playing Karn Liberated anymore, whereas it used to be a four of in every single list as the card you wanted on turn three. But now the metagame is either too fast or the effect that Karn has on the game is very minimal and gets countered by Spell Pierce, Stubborn Denial, and all these other cards that are everywhere in modern right now. So now it seems like Karn Agree Creator is the better option. First of all, because you can cast it without having Tron early on still. And if you have Tron and the opponent has a Spell Pierce, then they can't Spell Pierce the Karn because you'll have enough mana to pay for it. And then if you minus two to get an artifact and they Spell Pierce it, on the next turn you can still get another one by doing the minus two again. And Ugin has an amazing effect on the game when you're playing Tron, of course, against decks like Domain Zoo because it just exiles everything. It's also great against Yawgmoth to just wipe the board and reset the game in your favor, of course. And then you have two Olamog and around three Worm Coil Engine main deck. Then all is dust, Warping Whale, well. Artifacts, you have four Rings, three to four Oblivion Stone, around two Relic of Progenitus, and a few Chromatic Stars and Spheres. More Spheres than Stars because of Graveyard Heat, of course, which there's a lot of right now in Modern. Uh, then you have one to two Urza Saga, around one Baseju, the Tron Lands, and uh, three Forests. And then the sideboard, you have a bunch of Artifacts for Karn. And multiple copies of Haywire Might and Chalice of the Void for various matchups. Like this is good against any Cascade deck and any decks with a bunch of one drops. And Haywire Might is really good against anything that involves artifacts and enchantments like Amulet Titan. That's Mono Green Tron. Now at number two, we have Domain Zoo with 9.8% of the metagame. The only fair deck in this list of the most played decks in modern. So if you love these grindy cat and mouse interactive games, maybe Modern is not the format you want to play right now. Maybe you want to play some Pioneer or some Standard. Domain Zoo right now, it's really good since the printing of Leyland of the Guild Pact, since it fixes your mana, but also it makes cards like Wild Nakadol, Nishoba Brawler, and um, Territorial Kavu much better because you don't really need to stress about the number of basic land types you have all the time. It's also great with Tribal Flames. And you can start the game with it directly on the battlefield for free. So that's very nice. And uh, the deck has significantly benefited from that. Now it plays 4 Leyline Binding, 4 Tribal Flames, 4 Stubborn Denial, and 4 Lightning Bolt. So it has a lot of great disruption while having some very powerful threats. 4 Scion of Draco, 4 Territorial Kavu, 4 Nishoba Brawler, 4 Wild Nakadol, and 3 Ragavan, and 1 Giganta as a companion. In the sideboard you have Chalice of the Void, Alpine Moon, Fluster Storm, Pick Your Poison, which was truly the all-star of last week. Curse Totem, great against Yawgmoth, of course. Meddling Mage, and Wear and Tear. Now at number one, we have the deck of the week. The deck that everybody's been talking about and has been running, running the leagues. With 11.5% of the metagame, we have Esper Gorio's Vengeance. It's a deck that was around in Modern for a very long time. In its current form, there hasn't been any real big changes to the list. It's not like there was some massive innovation or new printing. The deck's been around for a while. I've played against it plenty of times before it got this popular. It's essentially uh, a reanimator deck that wants to use Stained Indulgence to put Grizzlebrand or Atraxa in the graveyard and then reanimate it with Goryeo's Vengeance. But some lists also play Persist. This one doesn't. Uh, well, we don't see any persist list, but some lists also play Faithful Mending to uh, discard. This one's playing full play set. Discard the big threats. But what's also really powerful about this deck is that it plays the Grief and Ephemerate package. So that's like a Orzov scam deck. What's powerful is that 
This combos well with Grief, but it also combos well with Solitude and Atraxa. Because when you reanimate the Atraxa with Goro's Vengeance, you can attack with it. But then with Goro's Vengeance, you need to exile the creature at the next 10 step. But if you Ephemerate your Atraxa, you get another ETB effect and you don't need to exile it. So that's very powerful. And you can also Ephemerate your Philagi Archaeologist for some additional value if you don't already have a threat in the graveyard or a card to reanimate the, the threat like Goro's Vengeance. Because Philagi Archaeologist... When it enters battlefield, you mill three cards, and you can put a non-creature, non-land card from among the cards milled this way into your hand. And if you don't, you put a plus one, plus one counter on it. So you can mill your Atraxa or your Grizzled Brand and bring back your Goro's Vengeance. That's the best scenario possible. But that's essentially the goal of playing this card, and it's also a blocker to make sure you survive against decks like Domain Zoo. And Grief and Solitude are also some really good free spells. You also have three Prismatic Ending, two Thought Seas, and two Force of Negation in the main deck. Some lists also play um, Touch the Spirit Realm, but also in the sideboard, the Fairy Time Raveler, Subtle T, Celestial Purge for Scam, Flusterstorm for the Cascade decks and Murktide, and also the Mirror Match, Chaos of the Void for some Cascade decks, uh, Dam, Force of Negation, Surgical Extraction, March of the Woolly Light, Prismatic Ending, and Emrakul. So that rounds out the modern metagame in the last week. Let me know in the comments what do you think about the current state of Modern. And do you want to see Ragdoll Scam, Is It Murktide, John Sagavan, and all these other fair decks coming back? Maybe it's time for a Death Rite Shaman unban to shake things up and make fair decks great again. Because now we're not really seeing any fair decks in the Modern uh, format. Except for Domain Zoo, which technically is a fair deck. Let me know in the comments what do you think. I have more modern content coming soon and I'll make an update in April when we fully see the effects of the modern ban on the metagame. And I will talk to you guys later.